So I was on the ketamine for 10 days, the last uh, two of which I was also on testing. Great, yep, like I said, the relief in my hands was amazing. So the doctor came in on the last night and he said, yep, that's cool, we'll um, we'll disconnect you at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning and you can go home and then we'll, just, we'll see what's taking effect, we'll see what happens. So I thought, cool. Um, that night a nurse came around at about 10.30 and the bag on my drip the, that has the actual ketamine, the drug and the saline that's with it in it, uh, it needed to be changed and that's something that they had to mix up and um, prepare for you. So this nurse says to me, well, um, this needs to be changed so either I can go and mix up another bag or you can just come off the drug now. I, I was off my head. I should not have been put in a position to be making, you know, changing what the doctor said. He told me to stay on it until 6 o'clock the next morning, which was, you know, a good eight hours away. So I said, no. I said, you know, me set up. You didn't take me off it. You're going to disobey what the doctor's told you to do just because you don't want to go and mix up a bag. Shame on you. Shame. Shame. The next morning I woke up and I still felt pretty good. I had minimal pain in my right ankle. Um, I'd had quite a bit of um, just not being able to feel it properly and it felt like it was plugged in backwards. It was really hard to walk on. I felt like I just had stumps. No, feed at all. So I've gotten a bit of pain back obviously but probably really more is wearing down. Uh, they took me off the drive. It was nice to finally be free of Rolly and be able to move around and have a shower and you know pack my bag up and stuff. Uh, the nurses came around and took the pick line out. That's not quite as complicated as putting it in. It turns out they just yank it out. Actually before they took the pick line out I um, I was feeling nauseous which is not unusual because have a go see I have to take a lot of drugs and my stomach's not the best so I'm kind of used to it. Um, but yeah, I was feeling sort of sick, kind of bit hotty, sweaty, clammy, that type of thing. But I asked the nurse, is it normal for someone to, you know, have these symptoms to kind of have a bit of a withdrawal after being on the ketamine and she just sort of says, no, that's not normal. No, I can do that. That's, there's nothing wrong with you. That's how I was treated and she didn't write it down, she didn't tell anybody. Yeah, I was finally discharged when I came home and then the pain started to come back. And it was like feeling acid pouring into my limbs. Like it was like it was like you know, if you, if you know how Wolverine like goes like this and the claws come out. Well, it was like it's just that motion. It was like a motion of pain came shooting down my arm, like just gloves of pain, and um, my legs, my hip, my jaw, everything that had ever been affected by the RSD was flaring like crazy. Um, I was panicking. I was. I've never felt that much pain in my life, and I've had RSD for years. So seriously, I don't know how I could feel that much. And not pass out. I kept thinking I'm going to pass out any second now. Any second now, I'm going to pass out. I took some digestive, which is what I had, and we went off to see my GP. As soon as I was wheeled into the doctor's office, he sort of took one look at me and um, he told me I kind of looked like someone that you see stumbling down Smith Street looking for the next hit. And um, my boyfriend sort of looked at me and this big grin comes across his face. It's like, I don't know how I didn't say it before. Or you look like a junkie. Yeah, I told my doctor about the pethidine and he suggested that what I was experiencing was withdrawal from the pethidine and opiate. So not unlike what you would go through if you were withdrawing from heroin. So if you've seen a movie, well, b the Basketball Diaries. If you've seen the Basketball Diaries with Leo, you know, kind of down on the floor, crouched and screaming and throwing up and that sort of thing. That's what it was like. This isn't a an ordinary reaction. GP prescribed me some Valium and some Brucin, which is the anti inflammatory, to get me through the withdrawal. And I took those and I just tried to sleep as much as I could. It was, oh yeah, just shakes and the sugar, <laughs> what it was lowing, that was a jar of the Sovereign Hill you know, raspberry boy lollies, and if you've never been to Sovereign Hill because you live on the other side of the world, well, sorry for you.
so yeah, I, I tear down on those and spent a week yeah, in a lot, a lot more pain than normal, pain all the way up to my shoulders. In the following week, I had really bad flares. My left hand was flaring to the point that I could not move it at all, which is um is not un uncommon for people with RSD, but mine hadn't been that quite that severe. But yeah, it was literally like it's like that, and I, I couldn't straighten my fingers. It was torture. If I tried to do it, it was like sending daggers up my arm or something. Like it was just hell. And then what used to happen was that um, if one part of me flared, that would kind of take over. So it was like the rest of the limbs couldn't get their pain signals through or something, um, which was, you know, kind of nice because even though you're in excruciating agony in one part of your body, well, at least the other part shut up for a while. Um, but now it was flaring, it would start in the hand and that was it. I knew it was going to all the limbs. I'd just have to head to the bed, lie down, get the pillows out and just wait for it to pass. There's really nothing I could do. Sometimes it would take hours. The only way, way to, to, to escape was to get to sleep. The other thing that was a bit of a unfortunate development was that I used to only get RSD pain from my elbows down. Um, I now feel it up through my shoulders, um, around it's kind of like it's stabbed through the back of the shoulders, also through the collarbone in the front here. Um, the burning there is not as bad as it is, say, in my hands, but there, it's not, I can't stretch it out, it's not a muscle pain, like, you would be surprised how hard sometimes it is to discern what the hell your body is doing, and what is actually in pain, and where is it coming from, what are you feeling, I mean, sometimes when I'm in so much pain, my my brain just detaches, and, um, like, my boyfriend says, I just get this kind of blank look on my face, like, I'm not really there, because it's, I, I can't, comprehend how much I'm feeling so I just kind of try and detach from it. The flares are worse than before the infusion. Um, I don't know if that means that the infusion wasn't a success at all. I kind of suspect that because when I left the hospital it was, you know, it was only that one ankle either. Either that ankle, you know, went nuts and spread it back to everywhere else or as would make more sense pain of the actual pethidine withdrawal not only brought it back where it had already been but extended it into my shoulders um pain spreads this thing many of us many of us see medical practitioners that tell us um complex regional pain syndrome is regional and it stays in that one region and it does not spread this is a lie. This is not true. It does, it can, and it will spread. If you read into yourself anywhere else, then you are in a hell of a lot of danger that you're going to end up with RSD in that spot as well. Um, this is what has happened to me. This is what has happened to um, other people that I have spoken to. And um, yeah, it's, it's quite unfortunate that there are a lot of medical practitioners who um, don't accept this and are still going, you know, basing their diagnosis on symptoms from 10 years ago, whereas we know a bit more about it now. Thank you for listening. Hopefully as well. If you've got any questions, feel free to email me at caf at relacafa.com. I will get back to you even if it takes me a little while because, you know, I receive questions down. Have a great day. Bye.